So what I wanted to tell you guys about next was just how basically our study of the cell, how it applies to the digestive system. So there's something that's got to connect one single cell to an entire system. So we're just going to discuss how our little cells are organized into multicellular organs which make organisms. Alright, so what does it mean to be multicellular? Multi means many and cellular means the cell like you guys know already. So to be multicellular means that you're more you're made of more than one cell. These organisms here at the bottom, they're all organisms made of one cell. So you have right here there's an organism. Right here there's an organism. So if each one is an organism, it means it has to undergo certain processes. It has to be able to reproduce. It has to be able to undergo cellular respiration or photosynthesis. And it's got to be able to basically excrete waste and ingest food. So if you're an organism, you have to do those things. So each of these organisms here, they do all of those things, but it just in one cell. So this is a picture of an amoeba. And we can see here uh, through a video that the amoeba is feeding. So if I press play here on the video, you'll be able to see that what's going on in this one cell is that the cytoplasm is being pushed around and there must be a piece of food here that's being engulfed by the amoeba. So you can kind of see if you look back in the video, it's starting to outstretch its cytoplasm and it encloses it to get the food that was laying there. So that's how one organism would feed. So that's a single-celled organism. This here is a euglena. Euglena have chloroplasts in them because not only do they ingest food, but then they can also do photosynthesis. So just to show you how they could reproduce, we can watch this video here, which is going to show you how this one cell organism that's filled with all these little chloroplasts, so all these dots aren't cells, this is one cell filled with a bunch of little chloroplasts. So we're going to see how it reproduces by binary fission. So this is almost symbolizing or reenacting mitosis where one cell will split down into two cells. So that one organism, that one paramecium, it's basically splitting into two by stretching. And then we can also see how this little slime mold here grows. So this is a single cell and it's just basically stretching. So that's an organism too because it has to undergo all of those processes. So you can see how that organism moves around. So all of those organisms, each of those three ones, even though they're organisms, they're only made of one cell. So when you take one cell and you multiply it by maybe millions, trillions, or maybe just billions, then you'll get a multicellular organism. So the way that those organisms are organized is that you have a cell, a cell will make up tissues, tissues will make up organs, organs will make up organ systems, and organ systems will make up a multicellular organism like you or I or a dog or cat. So, of all the different types of cells that there are, uh, we looked at a cheek cell and we looked at a plant cell, but there's other cells, like these ones here. These are muscle cells, so they're kind of long and flat. These are bone cells. These are neural cells. These would be like skin cells that you guys have already seen. These are plant cells because you have chloroplasts in them. And these would be blood cells. So, on the left, you have a red blood cell carries oxygen. On the right, you have a white blood cell that is one of the cells that fight off bacteria and any type of disease or infection. And then in the middle, you have a platelet, which basically is used to clog your blood. It's a clotting factor. So with all those different types of cells that there are, when you put those cells together, they make up something called a tissue. And tissues are made up of cells that have similar functions. So of the four types of tissues that we have that are connective, epithelial, which basically means near the surface, muscle tissue and nervous tissue. So the connective tissue supports other tissue and binds tissues together. So when you go to do your dissection of your frog, you're going to have to cut down the middle of the frog and then you're going to have to peel back the skin by releasing some of the connective tissue that's connecting the skin to the muscles. The epithelial 
uh, provides coverings and linings. So all of your organs and obviously uh, your skin is epithelial too, epithelium. What it does is it covers all of your organs. And so all of your organs are covered in this certain type of tissue. All muscles are made of long striated tissue. Uh, and those basically contract to make the muscle contract. And then you also have the nervous tissue, which carries messages to all the parts of the body. So of those four types of tissues, if you put certain tissues together, you can make up a whole organ. So for example, if you take all of that muscle tissue and put it together into something called a heart, then that heart has a certain function that it undergoes. So when you take certain tissues that specialize in a certain job and put them together, they can turn into an organ. So here you have a stomach, that's an organ, lungs, kidneys, a bladder, an eye, and this is your liver, and there's your pancreas. So when you take certain tissues, put them together, you can make an organ, like neural tissue put together will make a brain. When you put organs together, you make organ systems. So, for example, here's all of the 12 organ systems. This is the integumentary system, which is basically your skin. This is the muscle system. So you have all these individual muscles made up of muscle tissue. And all those muscles together make up the muscle or muscular system. All of the bone cells put together into tissue makes the skeletal system. All of the neural cells put together into nervous tissue makes the nervous system. And then so on goes for the endocrine system, the circulatory system, the lymphatic system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, the urinary system, and the reproductive system. So the one that we're going to be focusing on is the digestive system. So when you take organ systems and put them together, they make something called an organism like you and I. So an organism is made up of a bunch of different organ systems put together. And organisms can take in material, they can produce energy, they can release waste, they can grow, they can respond to the environment, and they can reproduce. So if something does all of these things, it's considered to be an organism, and all organisms can do all of these things. So what the picture below is showing you is that as time progresses, animals go from being something very small and uh, less complicated to something more complicated, like mammals, such as whales, like arthropods, such as crabs, worms, uh, mollusks, like snails, and even sea stars. So all of these organisms are multicellular, but they all had to come from something unicellular. That's how they evolved. So it's important that we understand the basis of their evolution, the cell, and how that builds on itself to make something like you and I.